Hello, statistics students. Today we're going to study combinations and permutations. So let's jump right into the instruction. As you can see here, <clears throat> less, we know that California license plates have number, letter, 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 number, number, number. <clears throat> and let's just say that I and O are not used, even though we know they are, but that just makes the problem more fun. Um, so that we don't com um, have confusion with O's or with um, zeros and ones. And all valid letters and numbers can be reused. So how many license plates are available? And if you couldn't reuse any numbers and letters, how many license plates would be available? Hmm. Well, using our fundamental counting principles, if we can reuse all the numbers and letters, 10 numbers, um, zero through nine, and 24 letters, because we're not using I or O. Pretty hefty number of license plates. Now, if you can't reuse them, you do have 10 um, digits to choose from here, but once you've chosen one, you only have nine left for here, eight here and seven here. And once you've chosen one of your 24 letters here, there are only 23 left to choose here so that you can't reuse. And then only 22. So you can see we're down to less than half the number just by not allowing um, reusing. So here are some definitions for us. Permutations, we always say order matters. It's an ordered arrangement of objects. So red, white, blue is very different from blue, white, red. If you're talking about stripes on a flag, for instance, those are different in permutation. But combinations, order doesn't matter. We're just talking how many sets of objects. So red, white, blue, blue, white, red, red, blue, white, etc. All of those um, are the same in combinations. <clears throat> An example would be um, for combinations, well, for permutations. Let's say we're um, having an election at school and we did student government this way and the top vote getter got the student government president and the second vote getter got vice president and the third vote getter got something else. Order would definitely matter there. But if we just said, okay, the top three vote getters are, um, are going to form a committee and run the student government, well, then order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you were first, second, or third. So then we'd see, you know, based on the number of people running, how many different committees are there? Here, it's how many different, you know, ways to order that government president, vice president, and whatever. Here, it's just how many committees of those three people, or how many committees of three people. So permutations, order doesn't, I'm sorry, order matters. Combinations, order doesn't matter. The way I always remember it is, you know that combination lock you have on your um, lockers? Yeah, that's not a combination lock, that's a permutation lock. And the reason it's a permutation lock is because order matters. Matters what order you put those numbers in when you try to unlock it. So here's five objects, three at a time. I have a penny, nickel, dime, quarter, and half dollar. In how many ways can I order those three at a time? Well, I have five coins I could pick in the, for the first one. Once I've picked um, the first one, there's only four left for the second. And once I pick the first two, there's only three left for the third. So five objects, three at a time, there are 60 ways of, of ordering them. Now I'm gonna write five times four times three as five times four times three times two times one divided by two times one. 
and you'll see there is a method to my madness. By the way, you recognize this? What do, um, how else might we write five times four times three times two times one? That's coming up. Now let's say some organization needs a new flag, maybe, hey, maybe there's a new country in the world, new state, whatever, and we just want horizontal stripes. And we've got blue, black, yellow, green, red, and white to choose from. And we're gonna pick four stripes out of one, two, three, four, five, six. How many different um, flags are there? Well, obviously order matters on a flag. So you have six colors you can choose from for the first stripe. Once you've chosen it, there are only five left for the second. And here's the third stripe, here's the fourth stripe. There are 360 different flags you could make of horizontal stripes with these six colors taken four at a time. And I'm gonna write six times five times four times three as six times five times four times three times two times one divided by two times one. Now what if you take those same six colors, but you only choose three colors instead, or three stripes instead of four? Well, now you're down to 120 different flags. And I'm going to write this six times five times four this way. So hopefully you've been noticing a pattern with these. So now I can give you the formula for counting permutations. We read NPR as the number of permutations of N objects taken R at a time. Number of permutations of N objects taken R at a time. So N must always, always, always be greater than or equal to R because you can't have five objects and take them seven at a time. So our formula is N factorial, and then the denominator is N minus R factorial. Please go back and check those last few problems where I wrote at the bottom, and you'll notice that it actually did look like this format. So NPR on the double box. Here's my double box. Now, if you have a calculator like this, great. If not, you're going to have to um, you read the owner's manual and figure out how to use these functions on your calculator. But on these calculators, which are pretty common, so I don't have any heartburn using it here, I'm gonna zoom in a smidge. I have the probability button. So um, let's go back to one of our last problems. Six choose, oop, there is it. Six colors, three at a time, ends up being 120. So we have six. Now that PRB is probability. I'm gonna click the probability button and you see what shows up. Ooh, there it is. And you see the NPR function shows up. So six, NPR three. So that's um, what we're really done there is six P three. And we already um, calculated that, that should be 120. And it is. So that's all we do for permutations. Um, what was another one of those problems? Five objects, three at a time, ended up being 60. Five objects, NPR, three at a time, 60. Don't just learn how to do this on the calculator. 
understand the formula and how it, how it um, how we came to it. Because I don't want to say I derived it, but I gave you a couple of problems where the intuition should be pretty obvious that leads to that formula. Now, if I have 10 students and I want to put them in order, four at a time, we use NPR. And that's 10 factorial. Now this, 10 minus four parentheses factorial. Please do not do something goofy like think you can distribute a factorial sign. A factorial sign is not a number that we can multiply through parentheses. And it's not, so it's not 10 factorial minus four factorial. You should be able to run that calculation very quick and see that that's not correct. 10 minus four is six factorial, or 10 minus four is six, so this denominator is six factorial. And then 10 factorial is 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Six factorial is six times five times four times three times two times one. So even if you don't have a, a factorial button on your calculator, you could simplify this to 10 times nine times eight times seven because the six factorial canceled with the above. In fact, you could think of 10 factorial as 10 times nine times eight times seven times six factorial. And then cancels with the six factorial down here. Now we have some fun problems that I don't know if they have any applicability outside of math classes, but they're fun. How many ways can we rearrange the letters of the word apple? Well, if I take these two P's and I swap them, you can't tell the difference. It still looks like apple. So obviously we have to account for this double letter. And so we call that distinguishable permutation. If I swap these two P's, you can't distinguish one of those word apple from the other. So the way to do it is we take five factorial, we take the number of letters up here, which is five, five factorial, and then we count how many of each letter there are. There's one A, so we divide by one factorial. There are two P's, so we divide by two factorial, one L and one E. And to make sure you did it correctly, this one, that two is three, four, five, those digits, not the factorials, but just those digits, have to add up to the same number as what's in front of the factorial sign up here. So the only way, we could rearrange these all day long, but you can see there's gonna be a duplicate of everything because we could just swap the P's everywhere. Every, in every one we have, we could just swap the P's. So that's a duplicate, so we divide by two. It's two factorial, but that's still two. So there are 60 distinguishable permutations. Well, that being the case, now we have banana. We have one, two, three, four, five, six letters in banana, one B, three A's, two N's. So six times five times four times three factorial. So the, that cancels, so that's just six times five times four. One factorial is one, two factorial is two. So this could simplify very quickly to six times five times four over two. Two goes into four two times. The answer is 60. There are 60 different ways we could rearrange the letters of the word banana and they would all be distinguishable. So that's permutations where order matters. We're putting things in order. Now let's look at combinations. Let's say I have five objects, two at a time. So my first, I'm just gonna number them one through five. So my, I'm gonna start by calculating how many permutations there are of these five objects, two at a time. So if my first pick is object one, 
then my second pick could be either two, three, four, or five. If my first pick is two, then my second pick could either be one, three, four, or five, et cetera. So my sample space would be one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, two, one, two, three, two, four, two, five, et cetera. So here's my sample space. Now what I want to do is, uh, well, first off, I'm going to calculate the number of permutations. You can see that by writing them, it's 4 times 5 is 20. Number of permutations of five objects taken two at a time is 20, so that's correct. But how many repeats are there? So I'm crossing out all the repeats. 1, 2, 2, 1, I'm crossing it out. 1, 3, so I'm crossing out 3, 1. 1, 4, I'm crossing out 4, 1. 1, 5, I'm crossing out 5, 1. And I'm calling them repeats because that's a repeat of the same set. Order doesn't matter in combination. So you can see that initially there were no repeats in the green, but if order doesn't matter, you start crossing out the repeats. What's left are the combinations. And you can see that we cut out um, half of them. Think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, we cut out half of them. So we had to divide this by two, which is two factorial, which is that one. So if order doesn't matter, we have combinations. In combinations, the number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time is the number of permutations divided by r factorial. So here's the number of permutations, and then dividing it by r factorial is the same as multiplying by one over r factorial. And this number in front of the parenthesis plus this number in front of the parenthesis should, I'm sorry, this number in front of the factorial plus this number in front of the factorial must always, always, always add up to this number in front of the factorial because n minus r plus r is n. So that's just a quick check. So if we go back to that five objects taken two at a time, my number of permutations is this. So I throw in the two factorial. Well, five minus two is three, so I have five factorial over three factorial, two factorial. Um, you can think of five factorial as five times four times three factorial. And this down here is three factorial, so those cancel. Then don't forget your two factorial. There are 10, just like we counted. On our, in our current textbook, there's a great summary of combinations and permutations on page 172. I encourage you to read that. So if you're dealing, um, if you're playing some poker, how many different five card hands are there? In other words, how many um, different ways can you be dealt five cards? And it turns out the number of combinations, because it doesn't matter in what order you're dealt them, the number of combinations of 52 objects taken five at a time is um, on about 2.6 million. So there are five factors. So if you look at the permutations, there are 52 cards you could get for the first one. Once you, you know, you're not replacing them when you're dealt the card. So there are only 51 left here and 50 here. 300 and almost 312 million permutations. But let's just pick one of those. Here's a five card hand. Well, there are five factorial ways you could be dealt that hand. You know, this you know, any of these five cards could be the first one you're dealt, and then there's um, four cards left that could be the second one dealt, etc. So, for every one of these 312 million hands, 
um, for every one of them, let's see, how do I want to word that? There are five factorial repeats for every group of cards, because again, there are five factorial ways of getting just these five cards. So since order doesn't matter, we have to divide by that. So here's our number of permutations divided by five factorial, and that's where the 2.6 million comes from. And when you see something as colorful as this, you know you're getting high quality education right here. This is Pascal's triangle. We start with a triangle of one, one, one. And then in between the one, one plus one is two. That's where that come, two comes from. And then we start and end with a one. We're gonna start with a one again. One plus two is three, two plus one is three. And we're gonna end with one. We're gonna start with one. One plus three is four, three plus three is six, three plus one is four. Then we're gonna end with a one, etc. That is how we generate Pascal's triangle. Write this down. Hopefully you recognize these numbers. If you didn't recognize the numbers, I'll show you where you should have recognized them from. That's your algebra. Let's look A plus B to the nth power. A plus B to the zeroth power is one. A plus B to the first power is 1A plus 1B. There's your one and one. A plus B quantity to the second power is 1A squared plus 2AB plus 1B squared. There's your one, two, one. And then A plus B quantity cubed gives you this. There's your one, three, three, one, et cetera. So that's pretty interesting. And Pascal's triangle also applies to combinations. Now that first one was a plus b to the zero power, that's zero. These rows are always numbered with the second number in the row, not the first. There is no second number here, so that's why it's row zero. This is row one, this is row two, because two is the second number. This is row three, because three is the second number. So it wouldn't do any good to name them after the first number. The first number is always one. Well, it turns out that these numbers also represent combinations. So if this is row four, this is four C zero. Now, what we normally say in, in um, probability, um, permutations we say pick, and combinations we say choose. Not that picking and choosing are any different in English, but we just um, use those two words to differentiate between permutations and combinations. So um, ordering five objects two at a time would be five pick two. And um, how many groups of two are there in five? That's five choose two. So this is row four, four ch choose zero. I got four objects. How many ways can I choose zero of them? Only one, and that's by choosing none of them. Four, choose one. How many ways could I do four objects one at a time? Well, I could pick this one, I could pick this one, I could pick this one, or I could pick this one. So there's my four, choose one. You'll notice this up here is three, choose one. Any number of objects choose one is just going to be that number of objects. Four choose two. Now it's going to be um, symmetrical here because if I choose this one here, there's three left over. So four choose one has to be the same as four choose three because for every one I choose here, there's three here. And they're both four. And then it'll end in four. Common mistake, highlight this, asterisk, whatever it takes. When I ask questions like this, too many people are gonna say that four, this is four choose one, four choose two, four choose three, four choose four, and I don't know what this is. Don't make that mistake. We're always starting with choosing zero.
in our combination. That's it for this lesson on combinations and permutations. There we go, got my screen set up. Have a nice day.